My name is Nuno, and um, I teach at the Faculty of Porto uh, Design Classes for the first year, or year one. And uh, normally I'm an architect uh, working in this context of uh, my hometown, uh, which is Pnefiel. Um, I studied at the Faculty of Architecture, I did Erasmus at uh, Delft, and then moved to uh, India for the second semester. Uh, traveled uh, in between that period and uh, and now, and uh, also taught at uh, in Bangkok in Thailand. And now I I, I run this uh, little office in the, this thirty kilometers uh, city from Porto, um, which I uh, cutely call atelier, as a place for uh, drawing and thinking and um, very much uh, trying to find ways of doing architecture. So th this introduction talks about uh, a journey or an odyssey that goes around, you know, different uh, latitudes, different parts of the world. And then eventually I came back to the exact same place uh, where I grew up, which is uh, Penefiel. And this little uh, bairro called um, Vila Gualdina, where I have the, the office running and uh, I daily commute to Porto to teach. And so I, yes, I can say that I, I belong to this place. And uh, this is pretty much what also informs my architecture, or my designs and the drawings that I do. These are uh, laid back places. Um, I think that the atmosphere in Porto or in Penafiel is very relaxed in a way that we have good weather in the summer and we have uh, moderate weather in winter, which for a starter is a nice thing to know. Uh, the food is great and the people are usually nice. And the context itself is um, it is no different than Portugal uh, socio and economically speaking as Portugal I think it's a very centered almost like a state city called Lisbon. So besides Lisbon I think uh, we all share a rural urban context which uh, blends a lot. And I would say that Penafiel is this kind of place. So it's uh, small in a way that you can walk everywhere and it's, uh, it's pleasant because you, you pretty much have everything in, like in a walking distance. Uh, um, culturally, a little bit lacking, you know, things happening, but then you can, you know, drive to Porto, which is 20 minutes from here, that, that in a big city is uh, two or three or four uh, metro stations uh, from here with a car, it's quite quick. So uh, for, for me, it's perfect because it gives me space and time to... The time that I don't use on a daily commute, I can use it in other stuff. I can play music, I can, I can draw other, st uh, other, uh, other kind of things and I can reflect on what I, I actually am doing. And uh, sometimes it blends a lot between what is the personal life and what is the studio life and what is the atelier. Um, it's a continuous movement, but I also like that because uh, it's, uh, you're always in tension. There's, a, there's a, I think, a healthy tension in between. My, my mother is an arts teacher. She teaches uh, geometry and uh, art studio in the, the secondary school from the 10th, uh, 11th and then 12th uh, year, so it's uh, high school. Uh, that was my main, uh, so I, I grew up with the art books, so let's say Kandinsky or Van Gogh or uh, Paul Klee or Picasso on, on the table. So that will inform and I started drawing when I was uh, little, so I, I like, I would like to draw. But I was very lazy to, to develop my skills and I, I always got frustrated with the skills. I would say that you start drawing and say, you're not good enough drawing, so uh, you, you get bored and say, I, I'm not, I will never be Van Gogh, so I, I, I don't want to paint anymore. So that kind of stuff happened, happened a lot, but never with architecture. So I, I cannot tell you that I visited a building and that changed my life. That's totally not true. So even the way I relate to architecture these days has also has to do with that. So I'm an architect in paper, but in the end, I'm not an architect. I'm just a regular person that, you know, tends to do architecture. And also that blends with this thing. I have a photograph uh, that I found, like probably two or three years ago of me in front of the Caesars, uh, you know, Pala, you know, the, the curved Pala in Expo 98. 
And for me, that was just, you know, a covered space, a huge covered space where a lot of people will be hanging out in the, in the expo. But that didn't click, you know, there was no, there was no sense of click. And in the very first part of my life, we also didn't travel abroad. So it was pretty much the architecture of the cities and what we are perceiving here. I can tell that I went to Paris and, you know, saw the Eiffel Tower of the pyramids in Gizeh. Probably I, I saw that in books and I was amazed by that. But yeah, there, there was just a relationship between places and figures and, and symbols. So I could say that Egypt, they are the pyramids and, and Moscow is the Red Square. But not in an architectural way of saying that I want to I wanna build stuff like this. So, but my mom, she wanted to be an architect and she took sculpture in, in the Bio, uh, Bellas Arts in Porto. So she had this background and she told me like, hey, if you want to do architecture, you should do it in Porto because that's the CISA school. Yeah, who's CISA? CISA is a very nice architect, you know, the, the one that is well known in Portugal. So, okay, that's, that's all right. So even went to Serralvo's museum and that was pretty much that. But she told me like, if you want to do architecture, you should get good grades because uh, you need to study now. You need to focus on if you want to do this and you still want to keep your garage bands and you, if you want to keep you know getting out in Sundays or Saturdays or hanging out with friends you need to be very focused so when I started uh, eventually went to architecture school pretty much all of my friends the ones that were there before they were saying like your life is going to end and this is architecture from now on and you're going to kill yourself and do all these night longs and for me, it was the opposite direction. So I just took it as pretty much as a game. So in the beginning, I didn't know anything about that as neither of my colleagues knew, right? So you st everybody starts with the same basis. There's no the architect's son or the architect's cousin or the architect's... The one that has the architect that is a sister or brother. So I, I didn't have that. I, did, I didn't have any architect in the family. So it was pretty much like a clean sheet. So. I had no preconception of what, what actually meant to be an architect. And uh, for me in the beginning, it was about plaster and white models. I, I didn't think that we need to know how to build them or all the layers inside a wall. So for me, that was uh, totally out of boundaries. I thought that we were going to spa think about voids and spaces so, or, or uh, uh, vectors. So we go that direction, we turn, we look and we see. And when I discovered that in the first year, that, that gave me a lot of uh, enthusiasm. So as an architect that I can actually, you know, almost point people where to go, what to see, what to feel, what to perceive. And this sensorial act of uh, uh, controlling spaces or, or controlling the void that you actually inhabit, that gave me a lot of um, will to do more. But not in a sense to say that, uh, well, it, it was not, a, it was pretty much the crisis of not knowing how to solve a project or the tempest of trying to solve it or trying to imagine how it could get better. But I never took this thing of saying that if I don't do it, I'm totally lost and uh, I don't know what else to do with my life. So I kept doing, you know, recording discs and playing and doing all these matinees on the weekend and playing punk hardcore from north to south with friends. And that kind of was also a kind of a lighthouse in the middle of everything. So. Yeah, you do design and I, I was pretty much focused on the design classes. Pretty much all the rest was, I, I was passing, like trying not to fail. And I was very focused on design. And the four hours at the school, I was putting all the effort in those four hours. Because if I don't work for those four hours, I have to pick these four hours and put them elsewhere in my agenda. And if I put them elsewhere in my agenda, then I cannot play anymore. And then I cannot go out Then I cannot hang out. I cannot drink beers. I cannot, you know, party the, the way you need to party while you're in school, right? You know, the best years. And that kind of uh, evolved in a way that I, I started, you know, moving passion about it. I, I was enjoying it. And uh, so the kind of suffering was pretty much the suffering of not solving, but not, not that there was a lot of pressure, at least on my side, like I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, my girlfriend eventually went to architecture because on weekends we were talking about architecture and I was saying hey, you look at that and you know like there's glass and then you can see if there's no glass you cannot see so you're on the other side so you tend to look at the river so if you're not framing the river it's just river everywhere so you don't you don't put any kind of importance because she's from a, a, a port a city a coast city called Viana do Castelo and usually you know we're walking around the 
or along the river and the other sea and I was saying, ah, you know, like, look at this, it's all glass. So it's being inside or outside, it's exactly the same thing. So it would be very nice to, you know, kind of, uh, I wouldn't say domesticate, but do mar, you know, a part of this nature and, and take it to a frame, you know, almost like closing everything and just framing one line. And she was like, ah, that, that's very poetic. Or that's, and I said, like, oh, you know, that this is, this is architecture. This is what I'm being told in school. And that's what I'm really interested in, these uh, tensions and all these movements and these things that are happening. And um, in the end, it, it became a game. So becoming a game, it also took out a lot of pressure. Um, you know, you learn if you do, if you do, you learn a little bit more, and then you learn and you do, and then eventually it just took off and um, yeah. First year, the school itself, the structure of the school, the, the, the layout and the spaces, they teach you a lot. You know that a particular room is not as happy as another one. And, you, and then you understand it that it has to do with the sun. And this one has a better light than the other one. I was working in one room turned to north. And every time I went to the other critic uh, for the other room, I felt that the vibe over there was happier than mine. So we were learning with Caesar and all the paths and the staircase and the narrow corridor that starts narrow and then gets wider and the library and the main courtyard and the Carlos Ramos and the way you're drinking, having a coffee under the, the platanos and also relating to the ones that are inside and the ones that are sitting in the bench. So eventually Caesar takes a, a huge, uh, it's the Caesar school, so it, it takes a lot on us in the first year. And I can say as clay that is being molded, um, it's totally up to the examples that we take and, and the conversations that we have with the, with the instructors. I, I, it didn't start from there of saying like, I, I, I look up to this person. So probably the, the biggest step was Tada Wando. And I think it had to do with the tectonics and how clean and uh, the, the, that little row house with the courtyard in the middle took my attention in, in the beginning. So just avoid like a door, then you went. So you cannot pretty much say what, what that is, if it's a mausoleum, if it's a house. And then you went to the house and then, whoa, there's a courtyard in the middle and the, it rains in the middle and there's a passage on top. So there was a lot of dynamics going on with double heights and perception. And if I'm here, I can only look down or up. And, and that kind of uh, uh, moved me. But then eventually Tadawando uh, looked for me as a very rigid and, and strict and, and very um, hermetic uh, uh, solution. So, okay, so besides the temple of, the, of water, uh, it started evolving into something else. Uh, and um, yeah, I met Paul Mendes da Rocha and Paul Mendes da Rocha pretty much changed the way, you know, looking at the gesture, a little bit more subtle, uh, um, the way he speaks about architecture and speaking about life and architecture at the same time. And uh, that was uh, something that I also could relate with Caesar, with the ordinary things and the very ordinary response about being local and, and solving and, and dealing with the local context to solve all these issues. There was also a conversation going on with the faculty. And uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, all, all the instructors, all the professors that I had in school, somehow they contributed uh, to, to, the, to the end, you know. Uh, with all of them, I could, uh, I, I totally relate with them um, and I can still pick some conversations. So of course that you're always product of all these conversations that even if you don't remain, if you don't uh, recall them and also the colleagues. So. I don't feel like there was, uh, uh, there was not an Olympus where we'll take and put uh, four or five names and say that this is what you want to do, or this is where you want to be. But somehow like drinking you know, bits and parts, of, like discovering the Netherlands and another way of uh, solving a school or talking about architecture, or getting a van, driving to Switzerland and then discovering something that is probably not mature enough to understand uh, how powerful, how hermetic, how solved all these uh, uh, what what is all, uh, all this architecture from Vorarlsberg and Austria that looked very boring, like it's all wood and there was like, okay, glass and wood and, and technology and and for us that we're not used to that, somehow it was a or, or building models with laser cut machines and uh, uh, we just do it with the X cutter and you draw it by hand and you don't know what to do, make a render, 
um, or going to India and discovering, you know, some of these uh, very uh, artisanal or uh, crafts, uh, crafts uh, uh, I don't say well as such, but, but a lot more dedicated to design and to, to hand labor, taking it to India and to, the, to this side. So, yeah, I don't say that there's, you know, the... Uh, that you look look uh, upon, look uh, to, to the ones that are higher there and say like these, these are the influences. Of course, like there's Khan or there's Doshi or there's Corbusier, there's all these guys that uh, you discover their architecture, you visit it and then you validate some of the elements that you feel like you should include that, that is that are part of uh, this knowledge of visiting a building. And for example, Khan in India the way the buildings will age, and then I also Corbusier and Chandigarh, and, and the way that architecture would sustain life, and uh, all these plugins, you know, the air conditioning, the cables, the antennas, the the cracks in the in the concrete, and the still the strong idea was still there, and uh, and, and in that sense, yes, that's the, that's a heroic for me. But if you also look at uh, the gesture part, is also very, uh, um, uh, how would you say that? Um, Autist, uh, they do their thing. Uh, besides being here or being there, okay, you imply or you implement local ideas, but it's still very personalized. It's very, it's an author doing that kind of architecture. When we finished the, our school in 2011, it was the the beginning and and not the beginning, but we are already in the accent of this biggest uh, the biggest crisis. So most of our colleagues and friends they were getting out. And I decided that I should take like three months to make my portfolio and start sending to the ones that I really liked. You know, like I had this bucket list. So like I would send to this one, this one, this one. So I would print this portfolio. I was taking a lot of time to think. And it was the first time in a long time that, uh, you know, it was, the, the world was over there. It was GTA. You know, you just can go around, get a car, you know, and decide which mission you're going to take. And, uh, and it was taking it from a... Uh, um, a way that you, it was so strict, you have first year, second year, fourth year, nah, nah, and everything is awaiting you. You don't have to take a lot of options. It's, it, and also our school, it doesn't allow you to take a lot of options. It's not like you, you can pretty much like in Delft, make your own course. You know, you can have a more theoretical, you can have it more practice, you can have it more urban, you can have it more dwelling, or you can pretty much pick sides, you know, pick which side of the fence that you are. And pretty much we are going all in the same stream, right? So when you get to the, to the, to the sea, after you, you do this uh, river stream, it kind of gives you an impression that you're not, no longer in control, being you in control. And uh, for me, it was, it was uh, insane. So you just pick the bike, the BMX, and start riding the city up and down at night thinking and listening to music and thinking, what now? Is it Switzerland? Is it Brazil? Is it uh, India? And was also in the, in the year before. So we started thinking about what, what, how was it going to be this timing? But I was totally on this, probably I should, you know, work in Brazil or, or be with all this brutalism that I, I really enjoy. Um, so I was putting up the, the, the portfolio, short story, long story, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine from the, from the school, he was, uh, he was invited to, he went to Brazil and uh, he had a friend that uh, there were two sisters, so this friend had a sister and they both wanted to build a house, so he said like, you should talk with Nuno. So I went there in this Saturday, I was not, actually not believing that uh, something would come out of that uh, meeting. And uh, there was this uh, ruin of a late 80s uh, um, uh, neighborhood like this, you know, like there was only the Tuasco, as we say it in Portuguese, so only the concrete structure, the brick walls and some plaster on it, uh, on, a, on the road, on all this classic stuff that starts and then stays like that for a long time. And uh, I started having this conversation with this, with this guy called also Nuno. And uh, yeah, what do you see here? What do you want to do with this? It's like, I have no idea. I, need, I would have to think about this for a while. But then in the end, we started talking about um, architecture, uh, music. And uh, we, we got to know that our favorite, uh, one of the favorite artists that we were following, Godspeed You, Black Emperor, 
was also his and it was mine. We started talking about music and post rock and this and that. So he said, okay, so I, I have no doubts about it. You're going to be my architect because we, we, we listen to the same music. And it's true, like we, we, with that one came the second house and then I no longer wanted to send my portfolios because even not being a huge amount of money was enough to go around and to start, you know, thinking about pretty much uh, uh, doing the practice. Then eventually another friend of mine that was coming from the United States wanted to invest in Porto way before this uh, touristic boom, wanted to build an Airbnb. So we, we got another project over there. There was a two entry competition that I was lucky enough to be the one winning for a restaurant in the city center. So things started, you know, appearing. And uh, when I thought that it was about the timing to take a decision to, okay, let's keep it this way or, or let's, let's find more work to keep it sustainable. Uh, besides working and putting up festivals and, and doing uh, um, a lot of other satellite uh, activities around architecture. So in that sense, I was saying like, okay, sometimes I'm an architect, sometimes I'm an uh, event producer and I put up uh, workshops. Uh, there was an invitation to go to, to Thailand to teach. So I just, uh, there was this morning in uh, Sunday that I got this uh, email from a uh, a lovely teacher of mine from Delft, Laura, they were saying like I was invited to go to Thailand to teach, but I cannot go. So I'm just writing to four or five ex-students if they want to take the, the opportunity. So I just went with friends from Erasmus. So it was almost pretty much another Erasmus while teaching in, uh, in, in Bangkok and uh, stayed there for, for some time. And the office appeared like that. So then I took the decision. It was no longer possible to be half there, half here. Ugo, which is uh, my, my partner from the society, also was uh, playing with me in a band and he was also a uh, co-author. We were doing a lot of um, putting up uh, some designs together and uh, building together. And it was unbearable, you know, to keep uh, one step in one side, one step on the other. So I just took, uh, said, let's go back and just focus on the studio. And um, yeah, so we, you cannot plan too much, I, I think. When I moved to Thailand, my, my, first, my first thought was what actually am I going to teach? Because I was looking at the, the kind of works that they were doing there and I didn't relate that much. I, I couldn't talk about that kind of uh, approach. It was a lot closer to the AA or to Bartlett in a way that it's conceptual, there's a, a very deep brief, you can, the boundaries are not so, the, the, the way the brief is written, the boundaries are, are quite open, and that's amazing. And I was used to work with, uh, okay, now we are designing a house. Now we're designing a museum. Now we're designing a library. So if you want to design a library, this is that, 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 that. And then I'm designing, a, or I'm helping students designing a happiness machine. And you say, like, what is an happiness machine? Is it a, think about that. Is it a spa? Is it a, a theme park? Is it a an happiness machine or a supernature. And what is a supernature? Yeah, supernature. And that, that opened my mind in a way, okay, this is a, this is a huge school for me. So I'm, I'm doing the best I can to interpret and to, and to give an idea of uh, criteria and path and, and creating a logic within this brief. But I'm also learning a lot how to open my can, you know, like I, I, it's like a can opener. Because my can was also closed in, in, in a system that was uh, like that. I'm not saying that this system is worse than this. It's just different. And it's, it's, a very, it's, it's super important to expose yourself to another reality. So there I was bringing a little bit of this and teaching my year four studios, which are totally based in sensorial design, and, uh, like the path, here you open, here you close, tension, proportion, scale. Uh, context, you know, are we relating with what? Uh, and then I was teaching other studios where sight, will, students will pick their sight and sight was not that important. So the gesture will be important. And that taught me a lot. And right now at the faculty, uh, pretty much what, what I think that I teach or I think that is uh, what we teach is, is the criteria, is the uh, first the method. So how to 
start reflecting and thinking about a design in the first year, that doesn't mean that it, it should take, that you should draw or need to, that you need to be the best skilled uh, drawer in the world, uh, not drawer, but uh, a person that draws, but it, it, it certainly improves your skill to be aware. And, and, and opens your awareness. So if I'm just going for a, a, a building site as a student, starting my, my starting to open you know the Pandora box, and I just take pictures of that, I'm, it's too immediate to understand what is the site and what actually I'm going to do. So what I think that we we try to teach at school is that architecture takes time, it takes time also to think and and the thoughts that you translate to me as a tutor, as a teacher, are the ones that are on paper and the ones that you can verbally describe to me. So if you're just quiet, and if I'm just looking at your model, there's no, there's no connection or there's no transcription, you know, being, uh, there's no exchange. So it's a place of exchange. That doesn't mean that I don't understand your project by what actually is over there. Sometimes it speaks alone, but I prefer to have the, the, the onboard uh, um, um, report of what you've been thinking. And with that, drawing takes a, a big part, as it will be collage or a photograph that then you do some, uh, you, you can write a poem, you can write a couple of words, a couple of sentences about what you, you want to imply in your architecture. And for me, that, 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 that would, that, that's what I'm looking for when I'm talking with a student. And pretty much that's what I, I would like to take from them is also a critical, uh, a critical um, side on understanding, say, this gesture or this, this volume or this space, how big is that compared to you? How, how do we relate scale with and proportion with what, what we are drawing? And I think that for a first year, it's a very important thing. Also to acknowledge yourself. In, uh, in Thailand, the, the first year exercises, they're all related with choreography and, and pretty much uh, building um, extensions to your body that will make you, for example, one exercise was to how two persons would relate with each other. So can I sit on top of you? Can you eat on top of me? Can, you know, and again, I, I pretty much open the door with you. So you would develop uh, um, mechanisms to engage with somebody else. And by doing so, you will understand how tall you are, how short you are. You know, if you all these connections that will make you feel comfortable in a space in, and also in relationship with somebody else. And I think that's also very actual, or it's very contemporary doing to this uh, COVID-19 uh, um, thing because we started talking and now we are talking in the distance and if I if I need my glasses to see you I'm always with the glasses or with the lenses to actually see you because there's no longer you know contact or handshaking or, or hugs or uh, so you cannot attend the music festival and be you know uh, tranquilito right because you're always thinking about the, all this mess so I think that um, as a profession, it's a, an hardcore profession to be an architect in Portugal. So we never had so many schools, we never had so many architects. The quality of architecture or criteria is getting higher, but the, the normally people will, 90% or 80% of the world doesn't need architects. They will think that they can do on their own. So even if you have a project, everything is drawn, there's always a question pending on actually the decision that you took. And that's normal, right? You're going to Ikea and you buy stuff and then the receipt says like it's normal to have doubts. So if you want, you exchange your stuff. So it's normal that you're building your house or building something and then you critique somebody else's thinking about the way you should be living or should be doing stuff. So totally okay. But as an architect, I think that there's a short margin or a short scale of, of improving and improving the wages, you know, receiving better, having better working conditions. So also the fact that architecture is something related to um, 
an inquietude that always tells you that it could be better. So as it could be better, you don't look at uh, you know the amount of uh, time that you're putting into something because you, you just want to make it better. And you want to leave it as uh, something that will prevail in time and will stay there. And you want to make sure that every time that you have a chance to build, you do it right. So we always have this thing of, I'm just starting. So you're just starting in the first five years, you're just starting the first 10 years, and probably you're just starting the first 20 years because you're trying to put your ideas out there and you're putting it the best way possible. And that's, to do so, you cannot, you don't control hours and then you don't control time. So it's, it's really hard. Uh, and I think that this is a very horizontal thing to our practice, being it in the United States or being it in Portugal or Spain or all this madness about competitions and the amount of so 50 big firms, they would put insane amount of hours that are not paid for a competition and there's only one guy, like a chicken coop. There's only one getting out and the other ones staying in. And even that chicken that gets out then eventually will realize that, that it's also a golden pill. You're putting that competition, you're putting a lot of effort, eh? the design is changed and it's different than actually what you thought about. And then in the end, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a conversation about the guy that is fishing on a beach, right? And if he, it's another story. Um, but this, the, the, um, as an architect here, I think it's hard because people also don't understand the way we communicate. Yeah, we, we always think that we, we just put up a, one photograph and think that it says everything. But it's uh, really difficult to like 90% or not 90 or 80 or 70, I don't know exactly this, the, the percentage of people that don't acknowledge sees as a friend and so of architecture, right? Or um, soon to be, you know, in ages to come, one of the greatest, being Caesar or others or Tower or, but um, not, not to be too Caesar centered, but, but in the way of saying that uh, what we feel as architects and the education that we have, we also need to understand that people don't have that and they can trade some very uh, um, basic stuff for them which are huge for us. You know, talking about having a, a rodapé in a house that you decide that there's no, you know, uh, there's no ending to the wall. And then the client says like, yeah, okay, but I'm, when I'm with a vacuum cleaner, you know, I'm just destroying my wall. So I, I want one. And when you say that, okay, but that changes the whole carpentry around the house. So the way the doors are connecting to the walls, the walls are connecting to the ceiling, the ceiling is connecting to the... So it, it changes all these parameters. It's impossible right now when the project is closed to decide if this is going to exist or not. So a simple detail that for a client is not that a big deal for you, it turns out to be a big deal. And then you put up, you know, insane amount of hours to solve the problem or to make it better. and eventually get lost. So being an architect in Portugal, but okay, again, I'm, I'm putting another general problem. Being an architect, I wouldn't say in Portugal, but being here in this context um, is that we don't have a lot of education reading drawings in the construction site. Most of them, they are done with a lot of heart. Sometimes when heart is not there, it's, it puts it in an even more difficult situation. Uh, if heart is there, there's a salvation because that guy will try to make you know, the best that he knows. And with your help and a lot of effort and, and patience, you explain things. But uh, most of the times they are just... Uh, you know, one to 20 drawings printed on an A4, and uh, the budget is always getting shorter, which make it very local, local materials, local stone, local, trying to avoid everything that looks like uh, and imitates, you know, a ceramic that is imitating wood or imitating, uh, because that, that, that tends to last for life, and people would say, ah, that lasts for life, and instead of like stone or wood, there's maintenance. So you're always fighting that. But uh, it can be a very fulfilling profession too, because you, you, it's a one-to-one -one sculpture scale model that turns on to life. So it's, for me, what really pushes me, you know, moving on is like, 
whenever there's a working site going on to see it raising and, and the relationship it creates with the boundaries or with the other houses and then you know perceiving you know there's a house that uh, I'm trying to experience a height of three meters in the in the sleeping areas whereas in the living room it's 220 to 240 without the beam and I'm sensing a difference a difference in living within that house I don't know if this experience is going to be well succeeded with the client but for now they they are interested in that relationship or a triple height in the staircase so pretty much it's always a chance to make it better or to improve from I wouldn't say from the last design but it's another theme another field of uh, operations within the same range um, but I think it's a hard uh, thing like some of my colleagues I, I'm very lucky to keep pushing and having other commissions to keep going uh, but probably someday if it, that, that stops I want to be a mechanic or I want to be cleaning forests or I want to be doing something else because then you lose what really puts you in, in, in the heartbeat there's this thing of creating and seeing you know and adapting your creation so you're, you're writing the song and then you're playing it live and live it's about the feeling, it's about, you know, the exchange, it's about the communicating with the crowd, it's about, uh, you know, a lot of things happening and the lights and the smoke or just being a short club with 50 people packed inside or being it um, 200, 300. There's so many variations with the orchestra that is going to play your song or going to be there to receive your song that uh, it's... Uh, that's the, the funniest and also the, the most driving part about uh, working and doing your stuff. And, you know, you win, you win, you lose, you lose, you know, it's, uh, yeah. And for you, how, I think this is obvious, but uh, how important it is to be part of the construction process? It's a, it's a 200%. Because I also get bored of making the drawings. So usually I have these ideas and I, we put on the, the essential drawings. So we also don't scare the constructor or the contractor or the client. Because if we put everything with the details, and uh, they will getting scared. Oh, this is all closed. There's no margin for improvement. So life cannot get in, you know. This guy is deciding everything for me. So it's always good to leave something. So you can also decide, of course, there's, there's the, it's, it's an open source. That was part of the decision, but for example, structure you cannot change. And the, the scale or, or the dimensions between slabs and walls, that's, that's something that you cannot change. And the approach towards the site, you know, how it engages with topography or the houses or the sun, that you cannot change. So if you that get right, you know, it's already, for me, 80% of the, of the work is done. Then, of course, you want to get, you know, for everything you know you, you want to go until the end you want to design the door that slide is so the little girl doesn't fall down the stairs or you want to design this little hall in between space where you leave your coat and you you know scratch your feet and you look yourself in the mirror with a, you know before saying hi to the family and then getting in or the light well or it's 200 percent because it's also part of the fun so if you don't see that you know building up and if you don't learn with that even with a process exposed concrete what is exposed concrete there's concrete everywhere you know even the, the raw concrete is concrete so when you say about i'm doing exposed concrete, which kind of concrete how actually do you do that how many how many joints where do you attach it so it's put, it's you buying the box of Legos, and now you're understanding that buying a Lego technique is totally different than buying just a regular Lego. So this, it goes around with that. So I think that also to acknowledge the process and what comes first, what comes next. It's also you know it's um, it's buying a bigger problem that you're deconstructing, and also understanding like in this one I can go as far as this, for this this client or for this proposal. Oh, in this proposition, I can, you know, I can go for the 45 degree uh, pine wood uh, uh, piece of concrete. And then you can think, okay, but you want to go that way? Or is it important for the whole design and gesture? Is it, okay, this, that's important. So it's all about this concrete. So if the concrete gets done, it's, uh, 
it's one less to one less to worry about so uh, yeah construction is totally it's very important and the people that you work with it's like being a manager for a football team you can have the football team you have the best players you don't connect you don't you don't accept you don't understand you you're pushing too hard you're or you're not understanding the difficulties of the work or you're being too sloppy to lose it's always a tension. So it's uh, here you give, here you take. It, it's, it's totally impossible to just be one person for the whole season in the whole construction. You will have this guy that works this way, so you understand that works, you know what is going to fail, or you're going to be the best one, uh, uh, and, and probably he will compensate for the other ones that are not so good, or they're not doing their work with the, the, with the same level of passion, and you work with that. So you always be the flow. Sometimes you have lunch, sometimes you drink a beer, sometimes you don't drink a beer, sometimes you don't talk and you take your, you know, you, you feel like a fist fighting and that goes along with the whole work. And the same thing with the client. So you can push him to having a wall that is painted in yellow, but not the whole house probably is going to be yellow. So it's, it's always a, a compromise, I, I think. And it's the same thing in your home, right? So I think that our context, mostly here, as it's an open thing. So uh, it's very often that a constructor will give you um, a price based on the black lines. And they know that normally they will build a column, a fill-in, brick wall, insulation on the outside and plaster on the inside. So they don't tend to look at the details. So the details sometimes they can improve and you can improve the details and you can work with the artisans to make it better if the guys are good and they want to help you out and they feel passionate about that. Um, the other house that I showed you, the, the, the carpenter was all over the place. He was having a lot of fun. He put all the crew there, you know, doing it, taking the measures, cutting the wood. So it's a different context of a closed project. Which would be also great. It was so nice to deliver, then get it done. Ah, so beautiful. Uh, because it also takes your head out and allows you to do other stuff, acknowledging that this problem is solved. But in the other hand, it's solved that way. Probably there's other ways of solving it. Or there's other things that you can learn still from that. And if you take it as granted, you get there and say, like, this is the way. And some. And someday you want to change and say, no, 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 no. Because in the other, the other thing, you also didn't allow me to change it. So I'm not going to change it this for you. So it's always good to, okay, this is the way, but there's other ways, you know. Yeah, we're driving here to Porto, but you know, there's other roads. I can get out of the highway, show you, you know, stopping for, you know, drinking a glass of wine and you know, eating a sandwich and then getting back to the highway again. So... I think that it's nice that it's uh, there's space for uh, improving. So it's not uh, two plus two equals uh, no. Huh? I didn't I, I didn't collaborate a lot or I didn't have a school after school as an office. So pretty much the office, my office or what I do. Let's not call it an office because it's pretty much it's not an office. It's a stu It's an atelier place where you draw, you think, and you do the best that you know, it's based on this criteria. So the folder organization, the layer organization, the amount of programs that you need to work with to, I don't give uh, no two cents on that. So, because I was not raised with that concern. So it's an open source. It's, um, it's, it's almost like I have friends that they are only sons and they what is the what is theirs is theirs right because they take this is mine and in this case as people get in and people get out and and there's so many things going on you know you can take it and leave it where you want it and then you take it again so this kind of organization or lack of organization is something that I would like to work in but also I'm afraid of if I work too hard on that there's a lot of other fireworks and things happening that will be lost because you're too concerned in controlling. So, yes, probably I could be controlling more. And this is closed and this is where we do it. 
that's something that I would like to learn a bit more about. Not not organizing my time or not organizing priorities. I think you know it's been working so far so good. Yeah, I think that I'm, I'm okay with that. But to to somehow uh, organizing a design, organizing a, a, all the method that goes because. So, it's often uh, hard to follow it up in the construction site because things change and then one thing that changes here will change so many other things and there's no enough time to when you get back to the office to redraw everything so then you finish you finish a building uh, uh, and, and you don't have all the drawings for that building then you want to publish and it's still ones are here and the other ones are there uh, that's something that I would like to to improve Without losing the freedom or without losing, you know, the, you know, some abstraction out of that.